Hey guys, this is Eric with Pixel Rookie, and this is the final episode of our series following the survivors of New Raleigh 2.0. In the previous episode, the colonists were being overwhelmed by raiders. As everyone was downed and being captured, a mysterious stranger arrived and saved them. Unfortunately, King Size died during the chaos. Still shorter men, they weren't strong enough from the following raids and their mysterious savior Leon was killed and Nyron was captured. It was just Hot Dog, Mac, and their newest recruit, Jess. How can they survive the hardships of Valley going forward? That evening, the men were still recovering from the previous raid and they received a message regarding peace talks with another faction. It was something they needed to consider given the current state of New Raleigh 2.0. In the middle of the night, Nyron's father went berserk. He was starving to death. The colony was in so much disarray that they couldn't take care of their prisoners. Everything was in chaos. In a starving rage, he attacked one of their pet Labradors. The pet retaliated in defense. The prisoner was so weak, it didn't take much to incapacitate him. He was down before Jess could even make his way over to him. Jess didn't feel mercy for the prisoner. He was cold-hearted and he knew the prisoner was already on borrowed time. He stripped him of his clothes and he left him there to die. The next morning, their prisoner died in the storage room. The other captured prisoner from the transport pod crash was in really bad shape too. Just a few hours later, they also died from their injuries. Jess also had a mental break and began wandering their base in a daze. Early in the morning, a large group of raiders appeared at the valet. The colonists weren't strong enough to deal with such threats. Mac was still recovering and Jess was wandering in a daze. Hot Dog was incapable of violence, which meant they had to rely on their turrets for defense. The first raider approached the entrance and was greeted by a barrage of bullets. She relentlessly pressed towards the turrets. As she got beside him, another burst of shots flew at her and she was killed, but more men approached. The raider in the back took multiple shots in the head and was severely wounded. Not even realizing it, Jess was attacked and knocked out. The men breached the turret's line of fire and began breaking them down. While checking on Jess, the raiders did critical damage to the turrets. They tried to fall back, but the explosion killed both men and caused the rest of them to flee. They forgot that the previous raiders penetrated the defensive wall and left an opening. Fortunately, most of the raiders attacked head on and Jess was only wounded. Hot Dog went to rescue him. Jess was recovering, but their base was still in complete disarray. There was blood and vomit all through the halls. Earlier that day, Hot Dog prepared another sarcophagus. Having to prepare yet another one weighed heavily on Hot Dog. Losing friends like this was taking its toll on him. His time with New Raleigh 2.0 was brief, but Leon saved the colonists from their demise. He'd be buried in the crypt with the rest of the men. Hot Dog laid him down and sealed the sarcophagus shut. The following night, Hot Dog continued to repair the defensive turrets. Early the next morning, Jess got sick from malaria. The men knew they were vulnerable and decided it would be worth meeting with the other faction and discuss talks of peace. Mac was their best person for the job and he volunteered to take a muffalo and meet with the opposing faction. He took supplies with them in case he had opportunities to trade some goods. He plotted his route on the map and prepared to leave. That night, Max set off with their muffalo to convince the other faction to stop raiding their base. A few hours later, they received a request to help a wounded colonist that was stranded somewhere outside of the valley. Looking over the map, they saw that she was nearby the location that Mac was heading towards for their peace talks. He might be able to rescue a new member of the colony on his way back. The next morning, Hot Dog was visiting Galvin's tomb while nervously waiting to hear back from Mac. The grief of losing so many loyal friends tormented him. Not long after, they received a message from Mac. The meeting went poorly. In fact, it made the relationship worse. Mac did everything he could and they knew it was risky to go out there in the first place. The incapacitated refugee was nearby. He made a short detour to rescue her. It only took a couple of hours and he arrived. There were crazed man-hunting animals in the area though. She was downed and surrounded by a group of bloodthirsty squirrels. Mac realized he didn't have a weapon equipped, so he got a pump action shotgun out of the load of his tradable goods. He went over and equipped the shotgun. The crazed squirrels were already making their way towards Mac. He used a nearby tree for cover and took aim. His first shot missed. They were too fast. He fired off a second shot, but missed again. He was being swarmed by the violent rodents. He tried fending them off, but he was completely surrounded. He was being overwhelmed and they weren't letting up. He tried calling for help as the squirrels tore at his flesh, but no one was around to hear him. Mac was taken down by the murder squirrels and the caravan was lost. They lost all contact with Mac and prayed that they didn't finish him off. It was just Hot Dog and Jess now. They noticed that they received another message though. It was a prisoner that was able to sneak a distress signal to them with her location. She was close by. Jess grabbed the sniper rifle and Hot Dog disassembled their defensive turrets. The desperation was really setting in at this point. They had to try and rescue her. After disassembling two of the turrets, Hot Dog proceeded to do the same with two of their batteries. Hot Dog was incapable of violence, but he had an idea. The men prepared to leave the base and head towards the prison together. They brought plenty of food with them and confirmed their destination. 
they left the valley at midnight. They traveled almost an entire day straight until they finally arrived at their destination. They surveyed the area. It was a small outpost and it was lightly guarded. Hot Dog used the darkness to his advantage and began unloading his turrets. He was planning to set it up outside of the base where they wouldn't be noticed and lure the men into a trap. Hot Dog set up a pillar so they could roof off the batteries and power the turrets. It took all night to set up, but everything was almost in place. They received a notification that raiders were approaching their base. They couldn't do anything about it right now though. The men finished installing their attack post. Checking on their base, their only defensive turrets were being destroyed. Not even realizing it, the enemies were fleeing their outpost. It turns out that they spotted Hot Dog and Jess, but one of the men were incapacitated when he approached them and the other one fled. Hot Dog's plan was a success. Jess tried to take out the other raider, but they were too quick. The raid back at their base was still going on though. The remaining raiders killed their pet Labrador puppies and set fire to the base. At least they were able to free the prisoner and she joined the two men. Jess continued to search the other buildings while their new colonists Bertha and Hot Dog packed up their small outpost. Checking back on their base, the raiders were attacking the remaining Labradors and incapacitated one. The other one was defending itself from the violent attacker. It was able to kill off the attacker which caused the rest of them to flee. There wasn't much else in the enemy outpost other than some clothing they had stored up. It was a small success, but the way everything else was going, this was a big morale boost that they really needed. After their victory, small as it may have been, Bertha joined the other two men and returned back to New Raleigh 2.0. It was a gloomy afternoon when they arrived and they saw the leftover chaos from the raid. Bertha went to grab medicine and help take care of the wounded Labrador pet. Hot Dog dropped off the supplies while Jess began clearing the mess up in the hallway. Hot Dog started preparing meals for the colonists to eat. That night marked the fourth year anniversary that Hot Dog crash landed on this rim planet with Tao and Swarmlord. He's gone through a lot during those four years and they're at their lowest low since he's arrived. He woke up early that morning and continued to prepare meals for the others. Hot Dog was lost deep in his thoughts as he finished preparing meals and had his breakfast. He continued to cook while the others still slept. He thought about how he started in this valley with almost nothing and how far they've come and the people he met, befriended, and lost in New Raleigh 2.0. He didn't want to admit it, but he knew if he stayed in the base with these two new colonists that he barely knew, they'd continue to be raided and he would either die or be captured like all of his friends did. He went to his room for a brief period of time and packed a small bag of belongings and he told the others he was going for a walk. He walked out of the base and continued walking. He never looked back. Before he knew it, he was completely gone from the valley. Hot Dog hoped that he would find a quiet place where he could spend some time in peace or maybe he'd find another colony and, and help him build a spaceship to return home one day. All he knew for certain was that he could never return to the valley, there was too much loss for him there. That night, he thought about the other colonists, his friends and thought how one day it would be nice to be reunited with them again. And for a few brief moments, Hot Dog felt peace. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed watching New Raleigh 2.0 thrive and then fall in this series. I'm going to be working on another series soon that's going to be a modded playthrough. If you want to see more content like this, feel free to subscribe to my channel because I'll be making more story series for RimWorld and other games as well. If you have a cool idea for a narrative series like this for RimWorld with mods, or even different games, let me know in the comments section below, I'd love to hear your feedback. Special shout out to my newest patron members, Ryan Smith, Ace Robidon, Josh Trams, Moral, The Drunken Coward, TJ, and Asian Government. Thank you all so much for your support and to all my patrons who are generously helping out this channel. As always guys, thanks for watching and until next time, have a good one.